connector whiff, and this is apropos for for ending off the connector whiffs. The sanctioning bodies are hurting boxing. Connector whiff. Go ahead, JD. Man, if that ain't the biggest connect that I could ever give to that man, the sanctioning bodies. All right. So here's the, the, the issue with the sanctioning bodies, right? The issue with the sanctioning bodies is that I'm going to keep it 100, man. It's all about payola. Point blank, period. Like, there's no reason to skirt around it. There's no reason to, to kind of uh, sugarcoat it. We're dealing with a absolute crazy political structure where fighters simply move up the chain based off of who they can rub shoulders with and who they can possibly pad pockets with, who they can, who they can get money with at, at, at the same time do a bit doing business together. We all have heard the stories of how top rank, I believe top rank is more buddy, buddy with the WBO. You know, that's kind of the sanctioning body that's really, really aligned with Bob and them. Um, you know, you hear of, you know, Al Heyman, um, I say golden boy and them, you hear about them really being aligned with the WBC, you know? And so, and on and on, you hear about these different promoters being aligned with certain sanctioning bodies. And a lot of it is all just a political structure for certain fighters to move their way up the ladder. Now, one of the most critical and this is the most critical thing that is hurting boxing in general is the fact that with each sanctioning body, if you hold a belt in another sanctioning body, you cannot be made a mandatory fighter to a title in another under another sanctioning body. So, for example, uh, you could have a fighter who's holding the WBC belt, right? And then you could have another fighter who's holding a WBA, WBO belt, right? And both of those fighters would not be on the other sanctioning bodies uh, top contenders list. So essentially for us as boxing fans, you end up with situations like what Demetrius Andre is about to go through. I can't even remember the dude that now uh, whatever sanction about they have given him a mandatory to fight, and he's dude's ranked number eight. How right, and the work? dude's ranked number eight. So unfortunately, inst so unfortunately, instead of him having to fight a Charlo, a Triple G, somebody who fans really want to see him fight, they can just keep farming up names under that belt as mandatories. And at the end of the day, it just <laughs> is what it is. And that's what can continuously keep happening in boxing, which ends up putting it on the fighters to where if the fighters who are holding the belts don't want to fight each other, the honest truth is they really don't have to fight each other. They don't have to give us the fights that they want. So I think the sanctioning bodies, because they don't rank everybody, even if they're a champ, right? Under other sanctioning bodies, they're really hurting boxing. And then you have scenarios like Virgil Ortiz, right? You got Virgil Ortiz, who at this point, I believe this dude might be top five under every sanctioning body. Now, I'm going to keep it real. As young as Virgil Ortiz is, I love him and I believe he's up. I believe he's on the come up and I believe he is going to dominate boxing at some point, along with Jerome Boots Ennis. There's no way in the world he's done enough that in all sanctioning bodies, Virgil Ortiz Jr. is a top five contender, which you already know at this point, I'm going to keep it real. There's politics and payola at this point, because remember, he will completely fall off everywhere else once he gets one of those titles. Once Virgil Ortiz Jr. gets one of those titles, he magically is no longer a top contender to any other title. And it just becomes, will he ever fight anybody? So, again, it's all about money and politics and how you can finagle and finesse and move up these different sanctioner bodies. And they each are just throwing money at each sanctioner body, trying to move their way up the list. And I think that's really hurting boxing, the fact that we can't have champions fight champions due to them not being on a top contender on, on other lists. What you got, Nicky? Connect it's connected, it. man. It's, it's <laughs> a connect. Uh, fully agree with everything you just said. Uh, basically, like the Jay-Z intro, man, back in the days, man. Fuck you, pay me. 
That's all. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's what, what they're saying. saying. That's what they're saying. The body we saying. here hostage, you know, the fans, you know. But that's what it. That's what it is. Yeah, and and and, I, and I'm a, I'm a just gonna because I feel passionate about this, um, and 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 this even goes back to my Spence argument. It's pre precisely for that reason you can't fault fighters for playing the game. Sanctioning bodies go on forever. Fighters have a very finite amount of time where they are at their most, uh, their the the strongest earning power, and so for me, man, it, it, it's 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 BS that, and it's emblematic of what happened during the pandemic, where we could see UFC still come together and get organized and put on fights, ranking other champions and other. Sanctioning bodies sounds too much like boxing working together, mm. way too much like boxing working together. Could because what that does is, and and I'll expound upon what what JD mentioned. What that does is, you can't get all the belts unless you beat that be, be the champion. Like if you literally, so if you got the WBO, the IBA, you know, and the WBA or the WBC or whoever, if it's if you're mandatory, is the WBC champion? Well, guess what? Hey, there's, there's no excuse at that point. There's no there's no mandatory. Like, imagine making other champions mandatories. And and even even across the board. Like, not like, oh, you know, the WBC has a power to no, no, no. If you have a belt, you should be ranked in the top two, three, four. And then that's when we get the that's how we get the fights we want. But what what it get what it lends itself to is this, is a situation where Spence and Crawford, where where you can pick what belt you want, and now you can still be technically Keith Thurman says this fight says, says all the time you can hold three belts. I think it's the IBF, WBC, and the uh, um, WBA belt, WBO, and technically WBO be undisputed. Mm -hmm. That's not undisputed, not in the four belt era. Like era. So I I mean it's really something where I say and 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 I, and I don't I'm not giving Spence a pass for doing this. But it's playing the game, right? It's playing the game the way they have set it up. And it's really BS because at the end of the day, man, there's no reason why. And this is even the boxing networks. ESPN does this. Everybody does this. Where they operate in a bubble like, you know, somebody's not fighting on Showtime. And, ESPN, and, and it's just amazing to how... No, it's worldwide news when there's a big fight, no matter if it's on Showtime, Top Rank, and these factions that you have in boxing is really killing it. And I think spearheading it is the sanctioning bodies. And, I, and I'm really disappointed in it. And well, I, I, I'm not disappointed. I'm not surprised. I'm just sick of it. And that's a simple fix. Sanction body. Start ranking these champions in your in your rankings too. Don't put them at the top of your list like they're untouchable and grayed out. No, put them at, put them as contender. Cause, Cause, that's how we unify belts. But boxing doesn't really want unified, undisputed champions. The fans do, but boxing don't. Everybody wants to make their money off the fans. All we cry to get the fights we want, you know. And, and at the end of the day, man, you, you know, we complain. We, you know, boxing's like a family. We love it, so you know, we can't really, you know, harp too much on it without acknowledging the fact that we still love the sport. We love what the fighters do, and hopefully, y'all love the commentators. And when I, when I say commentators, I mean us. And yeah. so, as I always say, man, hopefully y'all love us. Like, we love y'all. We love y'all. It's Boxing Vibe TV, baby. Take us out, fellas. Yeah, all right. You already know, man. Stream this pod 85. 85, we baby. Getting we getting close to 2022, man. It's about Ooh. that time, man. We're about to wrap up the year. I mean, yeah. I mean, stay tuned, man. We gotta put a we gotta put a top funnest moments, man. You know what I mean? We gotta, we gotta, we gotta <laughs> everybody, we gotta put in about three or four weeks. See, see yep. what we come up with, man. Y'all check it out. Hopefully by New Year. Most definitely. 1,000, baby.